Tori and Kevin, it's Jamie. I wanted to make a general observation I noticed after Tony and the June Tones. Mona throughout the show talks about things Angela isn't good at. Dancing, playing music, singing, things like that. But then we find out in the show that she actually is good. Like Tony in the Dream Tones, she can sing. There's an episode when she dances when they're on vacation. There's an episode coming up, I forget which one, where we hear her like do this really good drum solo off camera. So, is it Mona that makes Angela not good? Is Angela worried or nervous or something around her mother since her mother puts her down that makes her not good? Maybe. I mean, just something I noticed recently re-watching and listening to you guys. You must be the highest paid housekeeper on the entire eastern seaboard. Well, uh, well, what can I say? I'm, uh, I'm the Dan Rather of domestic engineering. Eh? <laughs> Does he make that much? Uh, <laughs> pretty funny. Hey, hey, listen, I'm, uh, I'm having the housekeeper's coffee clutch over here. Why don't you drop by? Uh, you know, we get together, we shoot the breeze, we trade secrets. Oh, secrets, I'm in. Okay. <laughs> Will you be making your macadamia nut brownies? Ooh, boy, you really do know everything, huh? Uh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> by the way, your daughter got a C on that geometry quiz. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> Samantha! Hi. Oh, I, <laughs> I like that. I, I don't expect that at all. <laughs> Welcome back to... Hey, yo. Oh, wait. There is nothing tiny about my tamales. This is the boss podcast. <laughs> I'm Tori. <laughs> A new title. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? I'm Kevin. Okay, Sorry. great. Sorry. We are here to rewatch and discuss every single episode. Of Who's the Boss. We're powering through it. We are. Today we are going to cover Season 4, Episode 19. The title is Housekeepers Unite. It first aired on Tuesday, March 15th, 1988, and the TV Guide summary says, The neighborhood housekeepers pick it when they find out that Tony is cleaning up in the salary department. I see what they did there. Mm. Cleaning up. Yeah. I, uh... What do you got? Um... When other housekeepers of the neighborhood find out how much Tony is earning, they go on strike until they are given a higher salary. Oddly, Angela encourages Tony to join them until she learns <laughs> the downside about this. Yeah, so this is a pattern. Downsides with, about this. Yeah, a pattern with Angela. Angela, always, yeah. always. Um, and the second one is after a fellow housekeeper accidentally discovers Angela pays Tony a lot more, albeit he's really the best. <laughs> she gets all the colleagues to strike, demanding a raise to his level. Tony wouldn't strike, being happy, until Angela convinces him to practice solidarity. When Angela realizes that means no Tony treat, no Tony to treat a major Japanese client to the home dinner she promised, he sticks to her original logic. The strike develops its own dynamic. At first, I thought it was that means that there's no Tony treat. I know that's <laughs> why I was like, because I read these cold. I like right. to be just as surprised as you. Uh, and she was very. Upset. I know. I was like, she what's wasn't... a Tony treat? I mean, I, I know, think I know, I what, know a what a Tony treat, treat is. <laughs> She's not getting it anyway. No. Okay, this episode was written by John Donnelly and Clay Graham. We've seen those names before. Oh. So when this episode starts. We probably have one of the most racially insensitive things that happen on Who's the Boss. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) Um, So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. Right. We know better and we do better. Now, it's not that Tony's preparing sushi. Like, that's pretty fantastic. It's the fact that he's, like, dressed the way he is, and then they're doing a lot of accents and a lot of... Honorable Angela son. Yeah. So it's just, it's a bit cringy, but we're just going to get through it. We powered right through it. But what we need to take away from this scene is that Tony is taking a class on how to make sushi. And he is doing that because there are some big clients that are going to be coming for a home-cooked meal. And I guess, like, you would think that if these people are coming here for a home-cooked meal... He would make them an Italian meal. I, like they're yeah. coming here, and then she's going to make them sushi, which is something that they can get at home. Right. Because they're Japanese. 
Right. The whole thing. <laughs> but whatever. I like when he's cutting up the sushi, one piece goes flying onto the floor. Well, and like, uh, Tony Danza's lucky he didn't lose a I fingertip. Know, but, because but how else is Tony Danza, <laughs> I'm sorry, Tony Maselli, going to cut sushi yes, like a lunatic? I know. He's like, it, first of all, it looks like he has a machete in his hand. And then he is just chopping away blindly at this sushi roll. I mean, they're going to look like shit. They're all like jaggedly cut. (laughs) We eat a lot of sushi. And we 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 don't ever see the sushi chefs doing that. No, No. it's Tony. And now he's he's bowing. (laughs) Plus, they usually wrap it in like the saran wrap before they roll so that everything stays nice and tight. That's why his little pieces are flying. Well, he's got the bamboo. He does have a little he bamboo rolls it roller. Up in the bamboo yeah, roller. to roll it. I don't understand right. what he's p- placing it in afterwards. There's like uh, a dish a off to the side. Like oh, is it just like, like a, a tray? wooden? It's like a, almost like a sushi boat. Like how oh, they serve it on I a see. boat. It's like okay. a bamboo thing. I see. I think. So Angela says, "You are getting very good at this." And then he says some insensitive stuff. Mm-hmm. And, to and he say knows thank he's getting you. good. She doesn't need to tell him. Right. He knows. <laughs> so he says he's his taking his that the cooking class is a lot of fun, and he's getting ready to graduate. <laughs> and uh, then he pretends to chop another piece of sushi, and then tucks his finger in and screams as mm. if he has, in fact, just cut the tip of his finger off. Dad jokes. And yeah. And then Angela comes running over and she realizes that he he's teasing her. So she's like, oh, that's very funny. And then she says, don't do it at my dinner party and walks away. Mm. And he, Tony says, you know, And I you hope get- he doesn't dress up like this and talk this way at the dinner party. <sighs> the guests are going to be very offended. Yeah. I mean, we don't see the dinner party, right? No, I n- no but, but still, yes. I'm just saying that out loud. I know, but it's. I feel like there is something at the end with more dress up. Okay, so. <laughs> dress up. <laughs> there is. There is plenty at the end with more dress up. Tony says, you get so uptight when clients are coming to town, but the Miyashiro brothers love you. He's recalling a Christmas card they sent with a haiku on it, and Angela says they always get sentimental around Christmas. He tells her, you better hustle. She tells him, don't work too hard. And he's like, I have to. I have my final on crab rolls. Mm. Crab rolls. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Isn't a crab roll basically a California roll? Um, I think so, yeah. Then he's like, you're going to be late. She says, I have just one more check I got to write out. And he's like, all right, well, hurry. And she's like, well, it's your check. And he's like, oh, okay, take your time. I know, he says he's up to his elbows in squid juice. Yeah, so she goes to hand it to him, and he's like, ah, just leave it on the table. I'm up to... What is... uh, What is he making over there with squid? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Uh, And what do you use? Squid juice. I don't don't want Tony Maselli's sushi. Making my sushi. No, not at all. I don't want squid juice. So he tells her, just leave it on the table. So she sets it down on the kitchen table, and she's on her way out. So she leaves... And he goes, continues on chopping up his sushi roll. And he's like singing a song and then he's chopping to like a beat. And then somebody knocks on the door with the same chopping beat. Right. And he gets very confused. Then he realizes it's the door. So he goes and answers it. And the lady at the door, <laughs> the actress's name is Conchata, I believe. Yeah, I think Conchata so. Conchata Farrell. Mm-hmm. So I would say that she's probably... Most known for her stint on Two and a Half Men. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, she passed away October 12th of 2020. Oh, pretty really? Pretty recently, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I remember, I remember when remember that, that happened, yeah. She was 77 oh. years old at the time. So, yeah, uh, quite a extensive list on IMDb. Started acting in 1974 on Maud. Oh, wow. Yeah, but it looks like... Oh uh, yeah, two and a half men's probably two hundred and eleven episodes. Yeah, of two she's and a lot. She's actually pretty great on that show. I've never seen. I mean, I've seen that show, but I've never really watched. Oh, the it's, show. it's. I mean, it's it's actually really funny. Yeah, and um and it's really well written. Um and her lines are just great. She's just such a jerk to them. And, and does she also play a housekeeper on yeah. that show? Okay, yep. so she is also playing a housekeeper yep. here. She's Charlie's housekeeper. So Tony answers the door, and she says, I'm Francis Martin. I'm the Barrington's new housekeeper. And he's like, he says, a fellow broom jockey. Mm, Broom jockey. (laughs) He tells her to come on in, and she says, oh, she looks him over in the outfit he's wearing, and she's like, oh, I always thought that the name Maselli was Italian. (laughs) Right. He says, it is. 
However, sorry to interrupt you. Right. Um, he did play right. uh, a half Japanese <laughs> right. person on, on the, the love, love boat. boat. So yes. I Bud. could see how she could be confused. Right, very confused. Because of how much he looks Japanese. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, right. Then he's like, it is, but I'm a Renaissance kind of guy. So then he's like, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm practicing for a dinner party. So she's like, oh, yeah, I know. The Miyashiro brothers are coming. And he's like, oh, how did you know that? Yeah. She's like, I, I, I like to keep up with what's going on in the neighborhood. And then she starts rummaging through their mail. Yeah, because she's nosy. nosy. <laughs> she is. There's just mail sitting on the kitchen counter, and she's looking through it. Yeah, it's a nosy um, woman. And he's like, all right, well, if you like to keep up on what's going on in the neighborhood, you came to the right place, because I know everything. And he tells her that they're putting in a speed bump on Maple Street. She said, not anymore. The mayor nixed it. Mm, see, she knows everything. I know. Tony's like, oh, well, you know, sometimes some, some stuff falls through the cracks. So he's <laughs> asking her, would you like some coffee or tea or some raw tuna? <laughs> I know. I'll take some raw tuna. I will take some raw tuna. And she's like, no, oh, I'll just, you know, a cup, cup of coffee is great. So she's like, but make it only a half because I already had one cup over at the Hendersons. Mm. And Tony says, oh, yeah, the Hendersons are a real nice couple. She's, she's like, yeah, it's too bad about their marriage. So this lady really does oh, know Oh, yeah, everything. she makes the rounds. She knows it all. Yeah. They're on the rocky road to divorce, but you didn't hear it from me. I, I do like that. I mean, I know it's morning, but there's always coffee. Like, oh, yeah. oh you want a cup of coffee? Like, right. We don't make too much coffee right no. here in case someone shows up. <laughs> we make the amount for me and you in the morning. Exactly. And it's just funny, like, because you never know. You're someone right. might show up, you need coffee. That's true, isn't it? And that, that pot's really full that he's pouring out. Yeah. I mean... He's made a lot of coffee. I know, and like how I, maybe he drinks more throughout the day. I don't know. I, there's just always yeah, I mean, that's just in almost case. like an '80s right. thing. Like there's always it's coffee. That, um, that there's a stand-up comedian that does that about how mom always had sanka and, right. and some coffee yeah, cake yeah, around yeah, just in case a, people. Yeah, what I can't remember name? who it was. I like him a lot too. But um, but um, well, and I mean, when I was a kid, when a, a lot of times like family would come over, or people would come over, it was like. Seven or eight. Oh, you want to? Um, you want put on a pot, a pot of coffee? Right. Like we don't do that. No. We never do that. No. Even, I mean, we've been in a pandemic. When we have people over, we don't like we're having like, drinks or whatever. Yeah, we don't we suddenly have, like, bust after, into coffee. No, we never have after dinner coffee. And I do remember that being a That's thing. That's a thing. Yeah. If I have a cup of coffee at seven o'clock, I know you're. you're I will not fall asleep until five a.m. I know. <laughs> like I don't know how people can do that and I then go to it, bed. Probably, but. So she says, all right, we well, probably also didn't hear about the Griffins. No, and he's the like, Griffins. oh, what? And she says, well, Mrs. Griffin, um, she's threw her twin sister out of the house because it seems like her husband kept mixing up the two. Oh, that's terrible. I know. And then Tony's like, oh, it could be an honest mistake. Right. And we know that Tony has quite a history with twins. Yes. Right? He does. There's yep. been a few twins that he's thrown out, <laughs> twin <laughs> names that he's thrown out there. Oh, Tony. Okay. So now this lady just picks up his paycheck from underneath, well, I don't she's know, it's nosy. like the mug of sugar or creamer or something there. Yeah. And she's like, oh, what's this? And he's like, oh, if you don't mind, that's my paycheck. So he takes it out of her hand and he folds it up. She says, oh, it's not really much to, you know, be excited about. We're talking some tiny tamales right. there. And so comes the line, hey, yo, <laughs> oh, wait, there's nothing tiny about my tamales. <laughs> Which is great. Oh, that is a fantastic line. Yeah, I knew we had to put that in the yes, beginning. Yes, definitely. Okay. So she's like, ah, well, you know, it keeps your taxes down. And he says, well, I get a lot of perks. You know, I, I get um, medical. I have dental. I get a Christmas bonus. And I have covered parking. See, now, like, hang on. So, I mean, I, I don't know what she's paying him, but medical, dental, she gives him all that stuff? Yeah, I guess he's on her insurance. Wow. How? How can she do that? Uh, They're not married. No, but I'm sure she has. It was a dep- she'd have to buy a separate insurance plan for him, and it would not be cheap. Yeah, I honestly don't know how that would It would be a lot work. of money, because the smaller your insurance, the smaller amount of people that are on your insurance plan, the more. And it's probably him and Samantha. So I know. maybe she found a way to She's like. She's paying a lot of money. Yeah. To have him. Okay, there. so there was a discussion going on on the um, Who's the Boss group on facebook Uh it's like who's the boss resource i believe it's called um i should know and we were kind of discussing like what do you think that he actually made here so i'm a pretty big nerd and i was trying to figure it out (laughs) yes so my thought is that tony probably makes about 
between thirteen and fifteen thousand dollars a year, which doesn't sound like a lot, but I was looking at that based on today's wages. Okay. So I looked to see like what the average housekeeper would make in Connecticut, and it was about twenty thousand dollars a year. Then. The, no, now. Oh, okay. But then I went with LA's rate of okay. thirty thousand dollars a year because I figure Angela's paying him more. Right. So then I looked up what thirty thousand dollars would have been in nineteen eighty seven, which I guess I should have done eighty eight, and that was about twelve point eight thousand dollars a year. So then I like went with the average of between thirteen and fifteen because Angela's a softie. So. And the his medical check, and dental and everything are all covered. Well, and all of his living expenses. So right. he, if the check that she, he's holding there, I would say is somewhere between $250 and $300. Okay. So then when she looks at it, she's like, you know, wait a minute, you have covered yeah, parking. How right. do you afford a car on this a month? And then he says, no, that's a week. So that would mean that if it's, say it's $300, so what does he make in $1,200 a month? But that is with all of his living... I mean, he doesn't pay for food. He's no. not paying rent. No. He, we know he doesn't have a car payment because he be, tries to beat up the van. Yeah. And he has medical and dental, and he gets a Christmas bonus. So, yeah, I think he is doing pretty okay. Doing all right. Like, it's, a, it's enough money where he's probably doing well, but it's a small enough sum that you could see why he, you know, really has to watch what he spends when it comes to samantha going on trips and stuff if you're really only bringing in like twelve hundred dollars a month all right thank you for that <laughs> i have no idea if that is would be accurate but it that probably was just is my best i'll go with, i'll buy it as to what he was making so he says yeah so she says you know you can afford a car on that a month and then he says no not a month this is what i make a a week all right, now then that's the game changer. Yeah. So now she says she does a little cat call whistle and says marry me. And then he does a little cat call whistle back and says uh-uh. <laughs> Which is kind of mean. I know. <laughs> I was like you could have been a little nicer right. about that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she says, you must be the highest paid housekeeper in the ent- on the entire eastern seaboard. The eastern, wow. I know. So he says he's the Dan Rather of domestic engineering. So do- Dan Rather must have been the highest paid newsman. I was about to say he must, yeah, at the time. At the time, yeah. yeah. And then she's like, does he even make that much? And Tony thinks that's pretty funny. So he tells her, you know, come on over. I have a little housekeeper group that uh, we do coffee. Oh, dear. Do you think they heard that? I don't know. Probably not. Um, I think people are getting ready for the 4th of July. Either that or someone was just shot out there. Okay. Um, so he's like, you know, we shoot the breeze. We trade secrets. And when she hears secrets, she's like, oh, I'm, I'm in. That's and right. Secrets. That's her thing. Yeah. And Nosy she, Rosie here. <laughs> she asks him, are you going to make your macadamia nut brownies? And Tony's like, wow, you really do know everything. She's like, well, you know, I wouldn't go that far. By the way, your daughter got a C on that geometry test. And then she walks out. And Tony's like, yeah, yeah, I knew that. And as soon as she leaves, he goes yelling for Samantha. I know. Very Tony. So later that night or the next day or at some point, Samantha's now working on geometry homework in the living room. <laughs> because I'm Is guessing. Is algebra or geometry? Well, I'm thinking it's geometry. What is Because she, she's talking about a hypotenuse, right? Oh, Equals the okay. sum of the square of the other two sides. I think that's geometry. Because Tony probably yelled at her because she got a C on the geometry test, which is what Mrs. Barrington's housekeeper ah, said right. to him. So now she is studying it. And she doesn't understand. And she says to Mona, come on, Mona, you're a woman of the world. Tell me the truth. I'm never going to use this. And she's like, no, you're not. So Sam's like, all right, cool. I'm out of here. She yeah, closes the books and she leaves. She's getting C's. Yeah. <laughs> and in the background, Angela is on the phone with Mr. Miyashiro. So she tells him, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you too. I have a very special dinner prepared in your honor. I like and, that she's uh, like bowing while talking on the phone. Oh, is she? <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> like, okay, great. Thank, watch, watch, she does it. Okay. She's like, I look forward to seeing you. And then it's like oh, having yes. a special dinner prepared in your honor, whatever, that whole thing. And then she says, you're most welcome. And right, then she starts, right. Yes, you're right. She is. Yeah, she she is does like, it once, yeah. twice. And then and then she's like, oh, I think she gave a look to Mona like, oh, I, why am I bowing? Right, like, yeah. What am I doing funny. here? Okay, so she says, I'm looking f- um, forward to seeing you. We have a very special dinner in your honor. And she's like, you're, you're very welcome. Give your best to my, give my best to your brother, Bud. Mm, Bud. Now, I wonder if Bud 
Miyashiro is a I don't know remember what his last name was right. on the Love Boat, but Bud was Tony Danza's name on the Love Boat. Yeah, he played a half Japanese character. Would that would have been before? That would have been before this. Oh yes, so it was right. definitely it was before definitely this. Definitely way before. Yeah, right. he was way younger. I remember now. And then Mona says, "Bud's the wild one, isn't yeah. it?" Yeah, name's Bud. Yeah, which <laughs> and. Angela's like, oh, shoot. She's like, Mother, you're not planning on attending my dinner party, are you? Because she's just picturing her picking up Bud Miyashiro and taking him back to that little house behind that their oh, house. <laughs> and Mona says, of course I am, because I don't get many chances to wear my peekaboo kimono. Oh, boy. I thought that that wasn't a real thing. And it is. Yes, it is, and they're very popular right now. So from what I can gather, a peekaboo kimono is kind of those sheer, like, um, it's like, like, a, a, like a sheer, like drapey yeah. kind of jackety thing that you wear right. over shorts and the tank top in the summer, or you see lots Whatever, of people wearing yeah. them now. Um, so yeah. So she's like, uh, you know, I'm definitely coming over because I want to be able to wear that. So the doorbell rings and Mona gets up to answer it. And at the door is Joanne. What is her last name again? Parker. Parker. Joanne, yeah, pa- Joanne Parker. Parker is at the door. So we've seen this character before. She was in Two on a Billboard. She was also in the episode where Tony ran for uh, PTA president. Right. Yep, I remember her in that one. She says, I'd like to speak to Angela, please. And Mona says, whoa, what an unpleasant surprise. (laughs) I know, Mona is nothing but mean (laughs) to her. No, I know, she's so mean to her. She says, "Uh, dear, Joanne is here. And she's she's in a snit. So Joanne is in a snit. She comes in. She stomps over to Angela. She's very Angela Martin, this character. Like if Angela yeah. Martin was older and had kids and okay, was yeah. married to a man who sold insurance. She says, I'm very upset with you. I'm extremely upset. And Angela's like, Joanne, you're spitting all over me. Oh, God. <laughs> so she says, it's all over Fairfield that you pay Tony more than any of the other housekeepers. And Angela says, it's nobody's business how much I pay Tony. How much more? And... They, Joanne says 50% more. Wow. Yeah. And Angela's like, what? And then Mona says 50% more. I know. That's great. That made me laugh, <laughs> yeah. actually. But it's Angela. Like, what a smart ass. I know. But Angela insists that she would never tell anyone how much she pays Tony. So Joanne says, well, Tony must be the blabbermouth. And again, Angela's like, don't be ridiculous. Tony is not a blabbermouth. And then at that, right then, he busts into the living room saying, hey, guess what? Hot scoop. The Hendersons are getting divorced. Uh So yeah, Joanne's like, I rest my case. So Angela says to Tony, how could you tell everyone how much I pay you? I didn't tell nobody nothing. I didn't tell nobody nothing. She's like, and then he's like, oh, wait a minute. It must have been the Barrington's new housekeeper because she saw my check when it was sitting on the kitchen table. Tony's getting involved. Yeah. Joanne says, well, now my housekeeper wants that amount and it's going to cost me a fortune. And Mona's like, oh, darn, you're going to have to hold off on that tummy tuck. Just again, coming at this poor woman. At <laughs> yeah. Listen, I don't like Joanne either, but I if she either. wants a, a tummy tuck, let her get a tummy tuck. Okay, then, so they're just kind of staring at each other, and Angela says, okay, Joanne, what what do you want me to do? And Joanne says, it's simple. I want you to cut Tony's salary. And now Tony's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, right. Come on. (laughs) He says, hey, if you're going to talk dirty, we're going to have to ask you to leave. And if you watch Angela in the background, she, like, starts to giggle and, like, puts her hands over her mouth. I know, it's funny. And I can't tell if that was Angela or if that was Judith about to laugh, because it's like... His line isn't that funny that I feel like it would make Judith like break, but it is a cute little like giggle that I that seems inappropriate in the moment. Right. But also I just like that how much they don't like Joanne, so if it's making her uncomfortable, they're happy. Joanne says, "Well, I'm going to have to talk I to know, I know, I really uh, sorry, I don't mean to stop yeah, you. Go, no, it go really for it. looks like she broke character and started laughing and they left it in." Yeah. It does. It does look like she's about to break, the, and then yeah, they kind of cut away. So yeah, you, they cut away immediately after yeah, he delivers right, the line. Yeah. <laughs> and go, jo- <laughs> I love it. It's so cute. Joanne says she's going to have to talk to some of the other homeowners, mm. and uh, now you know they've made quite a mess. And I hope you're happy. And she storms out the front door, and mm-hmm. Mona just slams it right in her face. All right, and she's right, and then she yeah. says, "I'm happy. I'm happy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So Tony's like, I'm happy too. And Angela says, she's happy too. And then Tony says, you know, Angela, gee, thanks. Thanks for putting me on the Fortune 500 of housekeepers. Fortune 500. <laughs> yeah. So silly. 
And Angela says, it's my pleasure. But she's like, you know, well, since you are the highest paid housekeeper in Fairfield, there's just a little something that's been bothering me. (laughs) She says there's a little piece of green scum under her soap dish in the shower. And then that just puts Tony in a tailspin. Oh, my goodness. He loses it. He goes running up, running to the stairs, and he's like, as God is my witness, you will never take another shower with scum again. And then goes running up the stairs. I'm going to say, I think I would, I feel like Tony's moving the soap dish around when he cleans. I Uh, I don't think Tony's letting soap scum go underneath the soap dish. And of course, in the next scene, what's Tony doing? He's teaching the group how to clean a soap dish. Because obviously... Oh, is that what it is? A yeah. soap dish? Yeah, oh, I'm almost funny. positive. I didn't notice that. Non-abrasive cleaner, yeah. blah, blah, oh, goes yeah, on. Yeah. And he says, you need, all you need is a little baking soda. Because now, you know, we got to review how to clean a soap dish because right. Angela found scum. <laughs> right. And a little baking soda, a little toothpaste, and a little elbow grease. And you I got wonder, yourself one he hell of a non-abrasive grease, he does the, cleaner. The muscle. He does, of course, yeah. yeah. I've heard that about toothpaste on like chromes and like faucets and stuff. So if anyone else is a nerd about cleaning, there's a lady on TikTok and Instagram named Vanessa Amaro. And one of the things that she's taught me about cleaning the bathroom is mixing Dawn soap Uh and vinegar. And then my mom even upped that by saying that she heats up the vinegar first. And that's how I've been cleaning the showers lately. Mm. So I smells nice. Don't heat up that vinegar. <laughs> if to, well, then you heat it up in the microwave too, and then it steams the microwave. But you wipe the oh, microwave nice down. Oh, nice double. Yeah, you're cleaning usage. all sorts of stuff. Also, yeah. Dawn, Dawn Power Wash. She's big into that, and we use it on everything now. But if yeah, Tony like could that. have had a TikTok back then, he could have been the Vanessa Amaro of his time. You think his, Tony like, would have been spending time on TikTok? Yes, because he would have been making little videos and giving out tips and being all hot while doing it. He would have caught on like wildfire. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I mean, think he, I he would have done it in a way where he was still getting his work done. All right. Okay. So anyway, and then he says it leaves, it even leaves your hands pedal soft. Pedal soft. So now all the housekeeping ladies are hanging out in the living room and Francis says, just watch out, Tony. Don't spill any of that on your four ply cashmere sweater. <laughs> four ply. Sorry that I got an email That's there. fine. He said, we, ha- he, we Kevin has his computer plugged in for a reason here. We'll get to it. Um, so he says, you know, give it a rest. We're all here to learn from each other. And another lady says, I want to learn how you make the big bucks. And that lady is mm. named Pat Crawford Brown. The housekeeper's name is Mary. Mm-hmm. And when we looked her up on IMDb, she's one of those people that has been in pretty much everything. Yes. So I can't tell exactly what... She what we know her from, right? She was on a lot of Desperate Housewives, which though. we watch. So I think it wa- might. Yeah, we watch that. Yeah, we watch. I mean, I don't know that we watched it to the end, it, but we watched. Yeah, it. but we watched a good portion of it. So now there are three women here, or two women here that are credited. So Pat Crawford Brown, who is Mary, the woman who sit who is sitting next to Mary on the arm of a chair, is not credited because she doesn't have a line. So I wonder if she's like a writer or mm. if she's an actual like extra that was brought. Oh in. yeah, interesting. He's like, oh, you know, come on. All right, all right, enough. And then he says, it's two-ply. <laughs> it's only a two-ply cashmere sweater. <laughs> I know. Um, a cashmere, I mean, pretty expensive. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm, I bet Angela probably gave him that as like a Christmas, Christmas gift bonus. or something. Yeah, part of his Christmas bonus. bonus. So then uh, another lady says, it sure is nice. Okay, and that lady is Lupe Ontiveros. If I'm saying that correctly, I apologize. Probably if not. not. Probably not. Um, and what I recognize her most from is that she played, oh, she passed away in 2012. Oh, no. At the age of 69. Oh, oh I wow. Didn't, I didn't look to see if Pat Crawford Brown also had passed away. Let me check. But I recognize, yes, Pat Crawford Brown also passed away July 2nd of 2019 at the age of 90. So another wow. who's the boss cast member or guest star to make it to 90. So Lupe was, uh, if you, if anyone else remembers the movie Goonies, she's the housekeeper that, what is the youngest, what is the main kid, John Aston's character's know. mother hires remember. to help them clean up the house so that they can move. Okay. And when they bring her to the house, she only speaks Spanish. So they ask Mouth, who's played by Corey Feldman, to translate for her. So she's walking around the house and telling 
Rosarita, I believe is the name of the housekeeper, all the things that she needs to do. And Mouth is translating it into the worst things. Like this is where she keeps all of her sex toys. Don't ever (laughs) go in these drawers. She keeps the body in the attic. And then the lady is just like getting very upset. So that's where I remember her from most. Okay, so he comes over and he's like, listen, you know, you can't compare Angela to other bosses. There are special circumstances to our relationship. Mm -hmm. And all of the women are like, oh, yeah, yeah, we've actually, we've heard that. We've heard that. Yeah, that's that's the hot talk around the neighborhood. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And he's like, not, none of that. And then, um, (laughs) wait, what is Lupe's uh, character's name here? Margarita. Margarita says my favorite line of the entire episode, which is, circumstances schmirkin pences. I know. <laughs> she says, we all do more than just clean. We do a lot more. And they're like, yeah, you're right. And Francis says, we should be getting equal pay for equal work. Mm-hmm. Now, I gr- agree with that, but I feel like you can't really hold that here because you have all different employers. Like, obviously, if Angela employed all of these people... They should be getting That's paid equal right. pay for equal work. But here's an instance of a man getting <laughs> paid way more than all these other women. Even And he's a man in a woman's profession at this point, you know? Like True. He's the outsider and he's still getting I mean, yeah, paid Right, more. immediately yeah. <laughs> getting more. But it's, you know, I don't know how that really would work when you have a bunch of different employers that really don't have any sort of standard they're being held to besides whatever minimum wage would be at the time. Right. Now, Angela comes in just then, and she's like, oh, hi, hey, pretend I'm not here. I know, I had to get some important papers or something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the hell she's when, talking about. And she just runs off to that little den in the background, and all of the women had stopped talking when she come in, came in, and then they all start talking about striking again as soon as they leave. So he's like, hey, guys, you all need to calm down, like, easy. And they say, yeah, that's easy for you to say, Mr. Moneybags. <laughs> So they say, I, we propose that we withhold all of our services until our demands are met. We want a 50% salary increase and medical and dental benefits. And we're going on strike until we get them. They're like, are you with me? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. And then Angela walks back through and they all stop talking again. She's like, sorry, I just had to get some papers. All right. And then she goes running off into the kitchen. And they uh, they start yelling again. So Tony says, come on, hang they start on. start yelling again. Hang on, hold on to your dust busters here. <laughs> no, I'm very and so Tony. He's like, Why don't you just go home, talk to your bosses, and ask for a raise? So Margarita says that she tried, but Mrs. Grant said that money's been tight since they got the third Mercedes. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. <laughs> we know some people like this, actually. Not like Margarita, but like whoever would employ Margarita. Yes. Uh, and then... Yeah, so they're like, okay, so they start yelling, strike again, strike, 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 strike. And Tony's like, come on, we're all sisters here. You know, we've been through a lot. And he's like, you know, I I, I understand your needs, and I hope that the strike goes well for you. But he's basically saying, like, yeah. I'm not doing this. Good luck with your strike. Right. <laughs> so they're like, you're a wimp, and they start yelling at him. But he says, I can't go on strike against Angela. Mary says, you know, he can do what he chooses, and if he wants to be a lousy scab, then he can. Ooh, lousy scab. (laughs) And Tony's like, gee, Mary, sticks and stones. (laughs) So Angela peeks her head out from the kitchen, and she asks if she can see Tony for a moment. So Tony goes in there, and they all start making fun of him that he's, like, going to go running into the kitchen because Angela's calling. And he's like, all right, Francis, no more macadamia nut brownies for you. That's it. <laughs> and he takes them into the kitchen I with know. him. I know. It really right? took him yeah. away. <laughs> so in the kitchen, Angela's like, what's going on out there? And he's like, I don't know. I mean, it's getting really ugly. One minute we were talking non-abrasive cleansers, and the next minute they're talking about going on strike. <laughs> non-abrasive <laughs> cleansers. So Angela's like, I can't believe what you're doing. And he's like, well, I'm not going to go on strike. And she says, that's exactly what I can't believe. Yeah. So he's like, wait a minute. You want me to go on strike? And Angela says, Tony, those who are more fortunate cannot turn their backs on those who have been deprived of the basic necessities of life. <laughs> <laughs> and All he's right. like, okay, well, so then, you know, you're you're okay with me just like going on strike with them? And she says, those women are fighting for a better life. You have to link arms with them and you need to stand together in solidarity. So he's like, okay, you're right. Or, you're right, Angela. I could be another Lackwalooser. And she's like, no. I could be another Luke Walisa. And again, she's like, no. 
we didn't understand what that meant. Right. So we I t- we typed in a bunch of things into Google well, we <laughs> and so it. we finally found it. You so found play it. Lech Valenza. Lech Valenza. Okay. Lech Valenza. So he but was. But I think the he's saying Valenza, even though it's a W because it's German. Yes. Well, he's Pol- with a V. Like my last name is Weber, but oh, in that's German, true, you'd say right? Weber. But he's Polish. Would it be the same? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So he was born in 1943 in Poland. He was a labor activist who helped form and led communist Poland's first independent trade union, Solidarity. See, that's interesting. I mean, and I wonder, I guess it was people knew who he was. I, yeah, I, I mean, guess if so. It, if it's I mean, referenced on Maybe everyone in listening to this, this knows who he is and they're like, you dummies, how did you I not get, know that? I guess that's true. That's a good but, point. <laughs> that is a great point. But I mean, I guess the joke might have been a bit too that his name is very hard to pronounce. Right. So that's why Tony is saying it two different ways. And right, then, I think that is the joke. Yes. And then he gives up and just says, Cesar Chavez. <laughs> right, who we, especially here in Los Angeles, um, we know who Cesar Chavez is. He's a, He was an American labor leader. Yeah. He's a civil rights activist, but a labor leader. He organized, helped organize unions. Okay, yes. I don't remember. But there's also a Cesar Chavez street. Yes. In Los Angeles. And here, so I feel like it's, um, like the kids have off for Cesar Chavez Day and stuff, and I don't yeah, ever do. remember that in Florida. So it seems like he is much more... Um, well, it's, it's because he's from here. Right, from here. He's from here, so that's yeah. why it's such a big deal. I didn't really know who he was until we moved here. And no. no. Angela says, Tony, there comes a time in every housekeeper's life where they have to drop the mop and raise the fist. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> is that, that's a thing, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is here. So he's like, okay, you're right. I'm striking against you, Angela. And she's like, that's wonderful. And she gives him a big hug. And Tony says, you're truly a selfless human being. I mean, you don't mind that I'm going to do this? And she's like, of course I don't mind. I wouldn't have it any other way. Because this is a worthy cause, and Joanne will have a cow. Yeah. So Tony says, moo, and he raises his fist, yep. and Angela says, moo, and they start giggling, and they're all very excited with themselves. So a timer goes off, and Tony's like, oh, it's time to baste the turkey. So then he walks over, and he's like, oh, wait a minute. He picks up the baster, and he's like, I can't do this. I'm on strike. So he hands her the baster, and he walks out. And now Angela realizes what this actually means. Okay, why are we making a turkey? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, what what's the occasion? I guess... Uh, d- Thursday? I don't know. I mean, this is what happens when you got Tony Maselli. He makes a turkey just because. In the middle of the week? Like, for no reason? I guess so. Maybe it's a small one. I mean, yeah, I guess. So, now in the living room, Tony's working on his strike signs. Yes, he is. Angela comes in, and she looks so cute in her little pink sweater with her collar and her, like, casual jeans. Mm, Her little pink sneakers. (laughs) Yes, so cute. And he says, Angela, how's this for a slogan? Don't iron while the strike is hot. It's actually pretty clever. It is pretty clever. Yes. And Angela loves it. She's like, this is great. You're, we're going to... Oh, Tony says, "Could I? should I write it in raging red or bring them to their knees blue? Mm. <laughs> um, and she says, how about power to the people purple? How, power to the people purple. Yeah, meanwhile, that turkey's ruined. Oh, right. Is this still... No, I don't know, this is, but but if Angela took over, it's ruined. That is true, but the I feel like this is a happened. couple days later. Yeah, because, I'm just saying that out loud. Right, <laughs> the turkey was dry, yeah, but everyone terrible. just ate it and pretended yeah. that they liked it. Yeah. Wait a minute, have we seen Samantha at all in this episode? Yeah, um, one time oh. we see her when she's doing oh. the algebra or the oh, right, geometry. Right. We saw her when she's doing the geometry, and I think she's going to show up again. She does. Okay. Um, so Tony's like, "Wow, that's good. No wonder you can afford me." Now, Angela, I'm, I'm sorry, not Mona, Mona walks in. Mona comes in like a child. <laughs> she does come in. I'm like hungry. A- where's breakfast? <laughs> like, the- F you. Yeah. <laughs> Make your own breakfast. You're the oldest person here. <laughs> like, where's breakfast? I know. And Angela says, Mother, Tony is on strike. You know, you're going to have to make your own breakfast. Yeah. How how about some of that nice chicken salad I made last night? So this is another reason why I think this is a few days later, because oh. 
she made she's chicken been... salad. So she's been making a few <clears throat> okay. meals. But so, why are we having chicken salad for breakfast? Nobody wants that. No, no. And Mona certainly doesn't want her chicken no, salad. No, she yeah. panics when she says Yeah. <laughs> she, Mona says, I want to live until the strike ends. I know, like the chicken salad's going to kill her. So she Mona's leaves. Mona's not happy. No. He's pissed <laughs> She's off. She's very grumpy. She's hungry. She has a lot of dirty laundry. She doesn't know what's going on. The phone rings and Tony goes to reach for it. And she's like, oh, no, no, you're on strike. So she picks up the phone and she's, uh, it's Mr. It's my, Mia, my, Mia, Mia my Shiro, Shiro on the phone. And she's like, oh, you're calling from an airplane. You must have a long extension cord. Wow. Yeah, that's a dad joke, it Angela, is. right there. Uh, and even Tony looks at her like, uh, I mean, seriously. And Angela says, oh, oh, you can't make it next week. Oh, well, when can you make it? Oh, tonight. Oh, well, tonight's good. So she's setting up. She says, tonight's perfect. No, it's yeah. no problem at all. No. I'll just throw something in the micro walk. Oh, God. That's, that can't be. <laughs> Jesus. We just, we thought gonna, they were over. We're just going to let it go. And she's like, oh, yes, yes, that's a joke. And then she says, thank you for calling. I'll see you tonight. So she hangs up, and she's very proud of herself. She says, humor is the international language. Oh, yeah. And Tony's like, yeah, you're so fluent in it. He's like, so they're coming tonight, huh? And she's like, yeah, we got to get cracking. We got to clean the house. We got to get the sushi made. And he's like, well, I can't crack with you because I'm on strike. Right. So why don't you just take them out? Now, why doesn't Angela just take them out? She says, I, I, I promised them a home-cooked meal, and that's what they're going to get. Yeah, you promised them that when they were coming next week. They have right. now given you four hours of notice. You can take them out. Right. And this could all take not be an dinner. issue at all. Yeah. But that's not what's going to happen. No. So here's another instance of Angela telling Tony to do something and then telling Tony he can't do that <laughs> something anymore once it inconveniences Angela's life in any yeah, way. Yeah, that's right. So he's like, well, I guess... It always happens. It always happens. Yeah. He's like, I guess you're going to have to do it on your own because I'm mopped down fist up. And she's like, well, I'm not asking you to go against the strike. I'm just asking you to help me with an important business Mm -hmm. dinner as a friend. Now, here's another circumstance where they're kind of like family weird relationship kind of blurs the lines because it is sort of like, you know... He could help her out just as part of the family, but he really can't because technically he is, yep. you know, a paid person in this household. Right. So Angela's like telling him, you know, you don't have to be so stubborn. He's like, I'm not being stubborn. I'm pro- practicing solidarity, which I don't know if you remember, Angela, was your idea. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and Angela's now saying, you know, no one's going to know. And he says, I'll know. And then he asks her, aren't you being a little self-centered? And she says, self-centered, yesterday I was a selfless human being. He's like, yeah, it's, it's interesting how quickly people can change. <laughs> right. And uh, he's like, you know, as soon as it inconveniences, inconveniences you, it's bye-bye working class, sayonara little people. So she says, how can you say that when I pay my little person the highest wages in the neighborhood? Oh, boy. Yeah, that was kind of mean. Yeah, it wasn't nice. This goes back a little bit to that one really bad fight they had in season one after Tony got her car color um, painted the wrong color. Yeah, yes. And she said, I'd pay you to clean the damn floors. Not quite that nasty, but I think it's uh, it probably hurts a bit that she's calling him a little person. Yeah, of course. So he's... He's like, she says, I refuse to continue this conversation. And Tony's like, why? We were having so much fun. I know. That and, sounds like sarcasm. Yeah. <laughs> and that sounds like a married couple, too. So just then Jonathan comes down the stairs because Jonathan this hasn't done anything in this episode, I know. But this is pretty cute. So he's like, hey, Tony, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, nothing. And he's like, come on, buddy. Unload on me. You help me solve lots of problems, which is probably very true. Right. Jonathan's mullet is getting very aggressive I know. Here. He looks older in this scene. He does. To he's... me. When he came down the stairs, he looked older to me. I kind of felt like he looked older in the last episode, too. Three teens and a Tony. Mm. And I don't know if it's because the hair is kind of growing the out The mullet is bit. aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he says, you know, well, Jonathan, it's like this. Me and some of the other housekeepers are on strike. And Jonathan's like, oh, yeah, I've read about strikes before. So you and Sam are labor, and mom and grandma and I are management. 
He says, yeah, that's right. Yeah. But why would Sam be labor? Sam's just kind of like Because a, she's part of the labor family. I guess so, yeah. But she doesn't actually get paid to do anything in the house. But yeah, I guess she's just part of Tony's package. Right. Um, so he's like, yeah, yeah, that's right. And she's like, well, he says hard cheese hard labor. Hard cheese is back. <laughs> yeah, hard I cheese love is hard back. hard cheese came back. <laughs> You're on your own. Yeah. And then Too he bad. leaves. Hard yeah. cheese. <laughs> Thanks, Jonathan. Thank you for all of your yeah, support. Yeah, after you and just help. said unload on me. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And okay. then that's the last we see of him. Oh, yeah, that is the last that's we see. It. And there's your one scene in your three lines. Yeah. Now, it's the same day. And Tony comes down the stairs and he notices singing some union song, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, he's singing Look for the Union. Oh, Look for the Union label. Yeah, That's I funny. wonder if I could be I'm not going to look it up. <laughs> I've looked up and too he, many things. <laughs> you're tired. He notices that there's a scarf laying on the floor. Right. And why is there a scarf laying on the floor? I don't know. Because and he's like, you wouldn't have a scene if there wasn't. Exactly. And he says, Oh, should I pick it up? No, no, I'm a strike. Oh, should I pick it up? Well, hey, I'm just going to pick it up. So he picks it up and he hangs it on the hook. And right then, Samantha comes down and it scares him. So he's like, don't sneak up on me. Yeah. And she says, sorry, next time I'll wear a bell. <laughs> right. I don't have any of this scene. Oh, really? In yeah, TV, cut right this off? Angela's scene. Okay. So Samantha asks him if she can have $10. To, and he says, no. And then she's like, you didn't let me finish. It's to buy the new Buster Poindexter album. Who's Buster Poindexter? Uh, he's a musician. But uh, it was in his, the album. I think that they're referring to is the album called Buster Poindexter. Oh, okay. Uh, which was his biggest one. Um, but it, he, it Buster Poindexter is an alter ego of the New York Dolls frontman. If anybody knows who the New York Dolls are, I don't um, know any of these names. Oh, the New York I mean, Dolls. Uh, there were quite a few people. Maybe in if the I New heard York some Dolls. of the songs, I would recognize. No, them. probably not. Oh, I can't. Um. But he he released an album at the time, which I, and it had like Hot, Hot, Hot. You remember that song? I mean, I, it's a cover, but I think it's a Is it cover. Feeling Hot, Hot? Yeah. Hot? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's yes. that song. Okay. And then there were a couple other songs from it. But anyway. Okay, he says no. Right. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> you know me. He's a, he says, I'm on strike here, Samantha. So, you know, we got to tighten everything up because I don't know how long the labor. this is going to last. <laughs> yeah, labor's on strike. We should only be spending money on necessities. So she's like, all right, I understand. I'll charge it. And then she leaves. You're telling me Samantha has a charge card or she just has access know. to his? I don't know. It's a good question. And then as she grabs her jacket on the way out the door, she knocks the scarf back down onto the floor. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Yes. That so then Tony goes over to pick it up again, but Angela comes up the stairs right then, holding <laughs> a laundry basket and a feather duster, and her hair is up in like some sort of scarf. So she sees that as when he startles at her coming down the hallway, he drops the scarf, and she's like, you know, you may not be cleaning up the place, but that doesn't mean you, you need to trash it either. And he's like, okay, whatever. So he calls her... What does he call her? Hazel? Hazel. Oh, yeah. He says that it'll never happen again. And she's like, great. And yeah, he says, uh, Hazel, I think you missed a cobweb. And he points to something over the door. Right. Hazel is an American sitcom about a spunky yeah. live-in maid named Hazel Burke. Yeah. So, I kind of remember. I mean, I've never I seen that show. show but I remember I've, it. Yeah, I mean, I name. remember seeing, like, obviously, I remember seeing it in yeah. reruns since it ran in the 60s. And believe it or not, it wasn't alive. <laughs> so... Uh, but yes, I know what the show is. So when he says you missed the cobweb, she's like, yeah, I think it works there. <laughs> I know, like we're going with cobwebs. How many days has it been that cobwebs are forming? Like I, I feel don't like know, that but, takes a while. <laughs> but she's got the thing on the head, like it's on. Yeah, like the, oh yeah. Yes, the she's, towel is on the head. And it's a little apron, apron around the waist. Yeah. So she says, speaking, uh, he says that he feels that it gives the living room an aura of neglect. And she's yeah. like, well, speaking of an aura of like, neglect, are you planning on picking up all of your strike signs before the Miro Shiro brothers get oh, here? Oh, boy. And he's like, yes, I will. How about I put them over by the fireplace? She says, how about you put them in the fireplace? Oh. And he's like, oh, that was one of your jokes, wasn't it? That was one of your jokes. <laughs> <laughs> now the doorbell rings and Angela angrily goes and answers it. And it's Francis, the Barrington's housekeeper. Right. And she says, it's for you, you Norma Ray. Yeah. <laughs> you want to know the Norma yes, Ray please, reference? Yes. 
Uh, it was a movie. Um, it's a movie with Sally Field. Oh, yes. And it's when the women started working. Yeah, she says, right? um, like a lot of her family before her, Norma Ray, Sally Field, works um, at the local textile mill where the pay is hardly commiserate. Commiser- I can't say that word. I don't think I can either. With the long hours and lousy working conditions. But after hearing a rousing, rousing speech by a labor activist, Ruben, played by Ron Lieber, Ron Liebman, uh, Norma's inspired to rally her fellow workers behind the cause of unionism. Yes, I remember that. Her movie. decision ranks her rankle. Oh gosh, she's worried. Okay, it's, it's okay. It's just, so late. Just, anyway, we understand. But it's Bo Bridges is in it as okay. well. I I was wrong. I was actually getting her confused with um, Rosie the Riveter, thinking oh, that it was when women no. started working in World War Two. No. <laughs> He tells Francis, hey, I've got all the picket signs ready to go. And she's like, throw them in the fireplace. Yeah. It's over. Strikes over. Yeah. And he's like, what? I mean, what happened? That was so fast. And she said, well, our employers realized that we were human beings. We had certain needs and that we were a lot cheaper than the hire- the temps that they tried to hire. Oh, boy. How come Angela didn't try to hire a temp? I don't know. She's going to do it on her own. Yeah. She took the towel off her head and everything after and she heard that. And it was soon as she hears it's over, the towel comes right off the He's head. He's ready for Tony yeah. to take back over. <laughs> so he's like, oh, man, I didn't even get to use this one sign with a smiling vacuum cleaner. So then she's like, I'm so glad it's over. She hands Tony the feather duster and says, there's a cobweb in the corner over by the door. Waste no time. No. And he says, you know what? I don't think I'm ready to pick up my feather duster just yet. Oh, boy. And she says, why not? You're the highest paid housekeeper in Fairfield. And Francis says, not anymore. Oh, boy. And Tony's like, do you mind? And Francis is like, no, no, I don't. Go on. (laughs) (laughs) But he wants her to get out. She's like, all right, I'm leaving. But tell me just one thing. Are you two sleeping together? (laughs) And he's like, get out. <laughs> the whole neighborhood wants to know. why. Yeah, and, and It's all over. We know the answer is no, but why not, Tony and Angela? Why not, really? So he's like, get out. And so he throws her out. And she thinks it's funny. She leaves. Angela says, you know, I'm really disappointed. Everyone got what they wanted, but that's not enough for you. You're hanging on like a child. Oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, this is really getting nasty between the two of them. Mona comes in and says, break out the bubbly. The, the strike, strike is, is over. over. My laundry will be done. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why is, Why Tony, is Tony doing do- oh, Mona's God, laundry? It's disturbing. I know. <laughs> She's just, and, and so Angela's paying Tony to be Mona's housekeeper as well. I guess so. Because you know Mona's not paying for any of that. No, no, not at all. Oh, then... Uh, <laughs> I didn't what? even... So Angela calls Mona Tammy Faye, and I totally missed that reference before. I know, but I didn't understand what it meant. Because, because... she's saying hallelujah, I think, because oh, Tammy okay. Faye was all right, all right, an right. evangelical okay. whatever. That makes more sense. Yeah, I mean, I, Mona doesn't wear as much makeup as she did, but maybe that's why, just because she's saying hallelujah. So yeah, she says, Mr. Obstinant is still on strike. And Tony says, that's because Mrs. Universe has yet to apologize to me. Mm. Yeah, and... She's like, apologize to you. So Mona's like, are you guys still at it? So of course she's going to come in now and she's going to neutralize the situation here. She even says you need a mediator to um, settle this labor dispute. Oh, yeah. She turns to Tony and says, you're right. She turns to Angela and says, you're wrong. She turns back to Tony and says, my wash is upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. And then Angela's like, you don't even know what we're talking about. How do you know that I'm wrong? And she says, because you're always wrong. And Tony's like, I told Damn. you. And Mona says to Tony, and you're stubborn. And she, he, he's like, hang on a minute. And then, you know, she's like, stubborn's actually an understatement. He, the man never gives in, not ever, never will. And then Angela's like, well, wait a minute. You know, I mean, that's not true. Like, she sticks up for Tony. And then Mona says something mean about Angela. You know, she never thinks of anyone else. She's always just thinking about herself. And then Tony's like, well, wait a minute. You know, Angela's done a lot of nice things for me. And I was the best paid housekeeper in Fairfield. Well, at least I used to be. And Angela says, that's because you're wonderful. So now Mona has gotten them to say nice things about each other and make up with by barely doing anything, <laughs> except for just being mean to both of them. Right. So now they're being all sweet and like, you know, I was lucky to find you, blah, blah, blah. And Mona says, okay, well, my job here is done. I'm going to go home and puke now. <laughs> so she leaves and the two, 
<laughs> and Tony moment. takes the feather duster from Angela, and I'm um, to assume that he goes and cleans that cobweb above yeah, the door. That, yep, the cobweb standoff yes. is over. So now on the tag, it must be the night that the Mira, Mia Shiro brothers are coming over, but they're not there yet, but Tony and Angela are getting ready. So he has the coffee table set, and she comes down. I know, it's all set up nice. Yes, and she says it looks beautiful. Now, Tony is again dressed in some sort of kimono situation. Yes, and Angela is also dressed the same, uh, you know, in a more feminine version. She looks kind of like the woman who is dressing up as the geisha in The Love Boat. And (laughs) she says that the the living room looks beautiful. And he says, so do you, my little lotus flower. Oh, boy. I know. It's a little flirty there. Uh, So she says, well, we should have the Miyashiro brothers over more often. So they sit down and decide to have a little sake, I guess, is what they're having here, before they get there. Um, And so they do a little toast. And... She says, here's to the highest paid housekeeper in Fairfield. And he's like, no, not anymore. But she's like, yes, you are. You're getting a raise. Oh, and wow. He, yeah. And he says, oh, oh, you can. And how much? And then she says, well, you'll see. Now I got to do all the math over again. Oh, he's no. <laughs> Forget it. And now he makes between seventeen and $18,000 a year. <laughs> But then he takes off. Yeah, so he's like, he goes running out the front door. She's like, where are you going? He said, I want to tell everyone. And she says, where are you going? He says, I'm going to tell Francis. But don't do that because then everyone else is going to go on strike know, again. it's a vicious circle. To, right, to make more money. And that is the episode. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to go first with rating. Okay. I'm going to give this one a seven. Okay. I think, you know, it's a decent episode. I enjoy it. Um, I could do without the racially insensitive stuff, but it was the 80s, you know. It's not something that we would hopefully not see on TV today, but it's whatever for the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, but I do, I, it brought up a lot of good things as far as, like, the balance between their friendship versus him actually being a paid worker at the house, um, and again, I do kind of get annoyed with this, like Angela says something's fine until it inconveniences until it's not. Right. Until it yeah. inconveniences her a little bit. That's getting and a little played a out. Issue. I know. We it could is. not see that story it is. again. It is. The kids weren't used in it enough, but they had a pretty big episode last week, or at least they yeah. did. I can see how so, it would have been hard to work them in. Yeah, but, yeah. You know. So whatever. It was it was fun. It was yeah. entertaining. Yeah. I agree. I gave it a seven as well. I think it's, I think for all the reasons you just said, and then some. And then Tony calls her a little lotus flower. Maybe I would have given it a seven and a half if it was a little less racist, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we will have to go with the seven. Who is the boss around here? Me or my mother? Or maybe it's you. I think Jonathan is the boss. Then stop it. <laughs> why? Why? It's funny. <laughs> it was in for about 45 seconds. Right. And all he said was hard cheese. <laughs> Which I love that he used hard That does make again. him a boss. Um, and that hair. I mean, I don't know. It was a toss-up for me on this one. But I actually went with Mona. Because, really? Yeah, I mean, she wasn't in it that much. But in the end of the day, and maybe it's for her own selfish reasons, she got them to work out their, she got them to work out their differences without, without making them realize that they were, well, yeah, you are, the, right. you are really good at your yeah, job yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And she worked it all out. And it's just so she can get her damn laundry done and get a breakfast, <laughs> decent breakfast in the morning. <laughs> yeah. You know, she did it for her own reasons. Of course. But, um, I mean, she still worked it out, helped them work it out. I mean, I don't know. That's the only boss I can come up with. I, I it was kind of between her and Tony, I think for me, but, yeah. um, I still went with her. I went with Tony. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just because like he, even though Angela encouraged him in the beginning to do it, once he does it, he sticks with it. And then even that's when it true. becomes yeah. a problem for Angela, he's like, no, you know, this is the that's right thing to do. Decide. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm going to stay with it. Mm. And so he really doesn't ever waver after that. Just the strike ends and then they make up. Right, so that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So I just went with Tony. But. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, you can reach us at Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram, Who's the Boss Pod One on Twitter. On Facebook, we have a page called the Who's the Boss Podcast page, or go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast, and there you can leave us a voice message. 
So the next episode we're going to cover is Model Daughter. Oh, okay. yes. This is when I don't know Sam... anything about this one either. Yeah, this is a big Sam episode. Okay. She starts, she does a little modeling campaign thing for Angela. Oh, gotcha. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank See you. See you later. Bye. Yep. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and give a big thumbs up and tell all your friends. And maybe you can tell your grandma, your mother, and y- your sister or brother. Maybe you have no siblings. Tell your dog and cats. Bye.